Time and time again, we hear those David and Goliath-like stories of an average Joe who doesn't want a big corporate entity moving into their neighborhood. Most of the time, these concerned citizens will start a grassroots effort to block development, with varying levels of success. But there are those cases where our protagonist takes a more unconventional approach, like with the anomaly of Jose Bové, a French farmer famous for his colorful opposition to the McDonald's restaurant chain. Before we get into that, though, let's first get some background on Mr. Bové. Born in France on the 11th of June, 1953, Jose Bové grew up in America as the son of two chemists researching at Berkeley. The family bounced around the globe a lot through Jose's youth, making him quite fluent in English. They were, naturally, quite wealthy, so Jose enjoyed a fairly privileged upbringing. At the age of 15, he was kicked out of a Jesuit-run high school for challenging the institution's beliefs. This rebellious streak came to dominate Jose's thinking, and he decided to remain in Paris to learn from local anarchists. While studying there around 1971, he found himself drawn to more radical ideology for the time. Though he enrolled in economics, he was more interested in philosophy, so after just one year of university, he dropped out to seek his answers elsewhere. Mr. Beauvais took a strong pacifist stance and declared himself a conscientious objector to the Vietnam War. When the military decided to have him shipped off to the battlefields anyways, he deserted. They were naturally not thrilled about this, and Jose Beauvais became a wanted man. Still, he participated in many anti-war demonstrations through the 70s, with his most famous being the protest of a military base that would encroach on the land of peasant sheep farmers at Larzac. This group took up residence and rebuilt demolished structures for their animals, with no permits or approval. It's said over 100,000 supporters came to the aid of the 103 sheep farmers indigenous to the region. When they refused to move, the French government sparred over the jurisdiction of the area. They tried using the French equivalent of eminent domain, called expropriation, to assert control over the land. The farmers and their allies simply didn't budge. What resulted was essentially a war of attrition lasting about a decade. The ordeal is considered the start of the French anti-globalization movement, which Mr. Bove found himself attracted to. In the midst of this, the authorities caught up with Mr. Bove and he was given a suspended prison sentence. On release, he rejoined his girlfriend and their young daughter, and the family began squatting in one of the old farmhouses at the Larzac settlement. Eventually, the French government gave up and let the farmers keep the area. Conditional, of course, on it being used strictly for agriculture. Mr. Beauvais remained in the area with his family to take up farming. Along with their neighbors, they produced yogurts and a variant of Roquefort cheese. This early victory seemed to justify further activism for Mr. Beauvais and he devoured any materials he could to better educate himself on being a resistor. More and more, Mr. Beauvais was drawn to the ideas of organic farming. He became critical of French produce standards, so in 1987 he helped establish the Confédération Paysonnée, or Peasants' Confederation. This trade union was built of many smaller, mostly left-wing unions, and they had a very clear objective. Essentially, they felt the agricultural industry wasn't respecting the farmers, the consumers, and the environment, and the Peasants' Confederation sought to change that. Anti-globalism was a tenet of this, with American produce being their biggest target. The reason for this was simple. Mr. Beauvais was firmly against genetically modified produce. One incident that boosted Mr. Beauvais's national profile was his hand in destroying a silo full of GMO corn. He was jailed once again, but he was beginning to understand how to turn public opinion to his favor. Rather than scorning him, the public found themselves on Mr. Beauvais' side. Some attribute this to his simple, folksy image, complete with farmer's clothes, handlebar mustache, and trademark pipe. At his trial, over 40,000 people showed up to support him outside the courthouse. Still, he received eight months in prison. By the mid-90s, Mr. Beauvais' environmentalism evolved beyond just concern over GMOs. He joined a Greenpeace demonstration in the South Pacific protesting the use of nuclear testing, which France had recently resumed. He also lent a hand to a number of independence movements taking place around the world, like in Tahiti. But these paled in comparison to his biggest stunt of all, which took place in 1999. There was a tiff between America, the World Trade Organization, 
and a handful of European countries near the new millennium. The WTO had sided with the United States over their push to allow hormone-raised beef into European countries. Most of Europe didn't take kindly to this and fought the move. In retaliation, America slapped tariffs on some of the finest European foodstuffs, including Roquefort cheese. Mr. Beauvais was outraged. Not only was America trying to strong-arm France into buying what he saw as inferior beef, it was holding his way of life hostage in order to do so. By now he had become a local leader for a Roqueford Cheese Makers Association, giving him a sense of responsibility to take action. At the same time, McDonald's was planning more expansion into France, and there was anticipation that the country known for its taste and fine cuisine wouldn't stand for it. But as the New York Times reported, most French citizens were either ambivalent or welcoming, with some exceptions. Mr. Beauvais saw a connection between America's tactics and the growth of its most famous restaurant chain, and he was quite resentful for it. Labeling the move as coca colonization, Mr. Beauvais launched an aggressive campaign to try and drive the business away. Unlike his time against the French government, though, this massive corporation wasn't willing to fold. That year, McDonald's began construction on a new site in Malau, France. José Beauvais managed to frame this as a battle for the culture of the relatively small town, and by extension, France. Doing so brought a considerable number of French over to his point of view. Then, in August of 1999, he had had enough. With a troop of followers from the Peasants' Confederation, Mr. Beauvais held a press conference declaring that the McDonald's wouldn't open, even if it had to be torn down. They said it would be a festive occasion, with Roqueford cheese brought along for onlookers to enjoy. Apparently, the intelligence division of the French police even tried negotiating over the phone for the group to destroy a mock-up of the building instead, but this was ignored. José Beauvais was certainly no stranger to creative political demonstration, so the public was hardly shocked to learn that the group made good on its promise. Mr. Beauvais and his cohorts began busting down the roof on the McDonald's while workers helplessly watched. It was remarkably peaceful given the context, and no one was injured. The organizers made good on their offer and distributed Roqueford sandwiches to the cheering crowds. Scores of supporters helped dismantle the McDonald's, with some indulging in the odd souvenir for their efforts. The five instigators, including José Beauvais, were all arrested. All but Mr. Beauvais were released, with the mastermind held because of his earlier participation in the GMO corn plot. Later on in an interview, he made his opinion very clear. Quote, Each country has to develop its own agriculture so it won't be dependent on another culture and thus lose its freedom. When Americans try to produce for the whole world, exportation becomes a political weapon. Poor countries import food so cheaply it destroys all incentive to create local markets. While he was awaiting trial, Mr. Beauvais went to work creating a media frenzy. He was somehow able to get to Seattle for a WTO protest where he spoke in front of a McDonald's with a displayed piece of Roqueford cheese he smuggled onto the plane. He had already won the hearts of the French public, to the point where demonstrations at McDonald's franchises across the country began cropping up. The French media likened him to Asterix the Gaul, a French cartoon character that fought off the Roman Empire and bore a striking resemblance to Beauvais. His upbringing made him an eloquent speaker in both English and French, which combined with his famous pipe gave him the image of a scholar. But he hardly took the charges seriously, and created even more spectacle to draw attention. When he went to trial, he showed up on a cart carrying a giant wheel of cheese. Mr. Beauvais appealed his convictions, and formed a legal team who compared his actions to both the Boston Tea Party and the storming of the Bastille. Arguments into the following year from the defense continued deriding American influence, but these were unsuccessful. He was defiant even after being charged, often appearing in the media with both his characteristic smirk and one of several anti-junk food messages. Capitalizing on his fame, he published a best-selling book in the year 2000. After years of deliberation, Mr. Beauvais was sentenced to three months in prison and ordered to report on June 19, 2002. He surprisingly complied, in his own way. Forming a convoy of tractors driven by supporters, they drew out the trip to just over six hours. Though he got to prison eventually, authorities weren't amused. 
While in jail, Mr. Beauvais protested with a four-week hunger strike. His sentence was reduced to just 40 days. On release, Mr. Beauvais was more convinced of his cause than ever. He continued protesting globalization and GMOs worldwide, but he found it difficult to travel after imprisonment. Mr. Beauvais' legal troubles didn't end, nor did his flamboyant responses to them. The trial for his participation in the GMO corn plot earned him another stint in the slammer, this time for 10 months. Mr. Beauvais wasn't feeling quite as compliant this time, though, and refused to report. In response, the authorities raided his fortified home early in the morning, crashing in through the windows and storming the joint until they found Mr. Beauvais. He gave himself up willingly and was escorted away by helicopter. But this show of force was caught on tape and the media seized it. Like usual, Mr. Beauvais' popularity saw yet another bump when he showed up on national television. Once more, his sentence was reduced, and he was allowed to serve the rest of his time tending to hospital gardens. Even though he was angling for a presidential pardon, he continued finding himself in trouble with the law through 2004 and beyond. Mr. Beauvais was denied entry into the United States in 2006, partly because of his tendency towards demonstration. That same year, he was charged with trespassing at a Monsanto plant, for which he was required to pay a hefty fine. Mr. Beauvais was known, though, for not always paying these. He was able to enter a handful of countries like Hong Kong and India, but most of these trips ended inside a jail cell. In 2007, Mr. Beauvais tried leveraging his massive popularity through a run for office, specifically as France's next president. In his words, he was fighting for, quote, the people that have no voice. Staunchly against the far right, he was hoping to unite the French left under his leadership, though he wasn't affiliated with a political party. He didn't make it past the first round of voting. Mr. Beauvais ran as a member of European Parliament in 2009, and to the surprise of many, he won. Mr. Beauvais affiliated himself with the Europe Ecology, the Greens Party, true to his political stances, with a few interesting differences. He did not believe in medically assisted births, for instance. He was re-elected in 2014, opting not to run again in 2019. But he did enjoy some of the spotlight given it was the 20th anniversary of his infamous McDonald's demonstration. He didn't attend anniversary protests, saying he felt the time was right to pass the torch for this cause onto the younger generation. Mr. Beauvais continues to fight for what he believes in through other methods. Love him or hate him, it's hard to deny that José Beauvais has been an interesting force in French society for the past 50 years. His name still pops up in the French media occasionally, either referring back to that fateful August day when he pulled the roof off of McDonald's, or for his latest take on contemporary issues related to globalization. He's mellowed out quite a lot by the looks of it, and has returned to farming in rural France. <laughs>